Hey guys, Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency video. Let's get right into it today. Keep it short and sweet. So just a quick video update, guys. Treasury to roll out cryptocurrency rules. Again, this was shared by Tony XRPZ and sent to me by Jared. So thank you. But this just came out. So again, these rules to improve transparency in hopes of stopping money laundering, the typical KYC AML requirements, nothing new. But what is new, of course, as we, you know, this development continues, Mr. Mnuchin told lawmakers that the regulations were being developed with agencies and financial regulators to improve transparency surrounding digital currencies like Bitcoin. Now, what I want to emphasize right here is this this is a quote. We are about to roll out some significant new requirements, Mr. Mnuchin said during a hearing before the Senate Finance Committee. We want to make sure that the technology moves forward. On the other hand, we want to make sure that cryptocurrencies are not used for the equivalent of old Swiss secret number banking. Mr. Mnuchin did not provide details of what the regulations would entail. He said that they would provide greater transparency so that law enforcement could see where money was going and ensure that it was not being used to aid money laundering. And I mean, it's just kind of a silly thing. Of course, they have to go through this. The SEC and different groups has to, you know, go through this. But I'm not just talking about money laundering. I'm just talking about overall, you know, securities issues, anything in between. And it's really funny because they act like fiat is any different. Fiat is much easier to commit all of these things without KYC, without AML. Um, it's just kind of comical to me with anything, a digital currency, whether it's Bitcoin, XRP, any altcoin, it's a lot easier to track. I mean, granted, you know, we're not talking about some privacy coins like Monero, but you know, we, we know what's coming. We know that it's going to be a digital world. Hopefully we can capitalize and get some money out of this, but we're going to be losing more and more privacy and people act like they care about privacy. Yet most kids nowadays that act like they care about privacy share their you know entire life on social media. So I beg to differ. All right, next up. So Crypto Talk Daily, as we can see, or the repo operations are continuing. Today, we have a repo for $87 billion and then a 14-day repo for $20 billion. So again, just keeps going, keeps going. As we can see, the deal date, Thursday, March 5th, delivery date, March 5th, and then again, maturity date, March 6th. So it just continues, never ending, as we can see down here, 87.357 just keeps keeps going um i know we saw the stock market at least like the dow go up another you know 1000 points yesterday today as of recording this video we are down 800 points so extreme volatility tons of uncertainty in the markets next my next point greg manorino guys i know you know him i know you keep up with him his calls are absolutely phenomenal and this is what he's been saying he says for the first time ever since the last meltdown we're talking the financial crisis in 08 cnbc is addressing the possibility of a credit freeze People, I've been warning of this for a long while, and not only is this a possibility, but this is one of the reasons behind the repo scam, the illusion of liquidity. Another credit fee freeze will occur, Greg Manorino, GM. So this is what he's sharing. I'm just sharing it to, you know, hear your thoughts, guys. I'm not saying I believe it, but I like to entertain different ideas, all right? Now, some people, as we can see here, this gentleman says credit freeze will kill precious metals, and he says quite the opposite, goes on to make another tweet and just saying that it, it's his opinion when another credit freeze freeze occurs gold silver precious metals and crypto will skyrocket and i mean skyrocket now a lot of you say greg manorino never mentions xrp well i'm sure you saw that when everybody retweeted it what the past week or so they asked finally because he only talked about ethereum and bitcoin he never mentions xrp in his videos which you know of course i was suspicious i didn't know if he didn't like it or wanted to keep it a secret or what and people said what's your opinion of xrp one through ten he just responded with the ten so very, you know, he thinks it's obviously solving one of the most obvious problems in the space. All right, next up, XR Plumber. So just sharing this, this is shared by the Bank for International Settlements. So again, a speech, Benjamin Diokno, I don't know how to pronounce it, and he's gearing up for the road ahead with foresight on purpose. And just to read a quick screenshot from this article. So to support our financial inclusion agenda, remember level playing field, financial inclusion, everybody on a permissionless basis, it's distributed, you get it. We are... Uh, champagne or championing excuse me such a weird word an enabling environment for the digitalization of the payment system our flagship product or project is the national retail payment system nrps which is expected to boost economic economic activities by making available an interoperable safe secure and efficient real-time digital payments system it's coming CD, you know, central bank digital currencies are readily being tested, adopted, and have been for at least since 2016. We know huge groups and, you know, custodians, even like Fidelity, 
have been buying Bitcoin since 2015. They're stocking up. They're ready to go when financial advisors want to be able to sell products to us. Simply a matter of time, guys. This is, you know, one of the reasons I'm not saying this has to do with extra P. Could it? Absolutely. Could it have to do with Ethereum or some type of DAP? Yeah, absolutely. Or could it just be, you know, an interoperable type of walled garden cryptocurrency like JP Morgan, not necessarily intra-bank, but something similar? Absolutely. What I'm saying is the technology is being adopted and the problem that Ripple or XRP is aiming to solve still is there. Next, this is shared by Reborn. So this is really cool. So again, every underlined, everything underlined in red right here, guys, is either an official partner of Ripple or R3, the banking consortium, directly linked with the company Ripple or R3, or have strong ties with Ripple and R3. And you guys can see that whether it's the board members, whether it's, you know, trialing XRP, whether it's various partnerships through Visa and MasterCard. Um, things of that nature, MoneyGram, Visa Direct, you can kind of see, you know, who's worked together in the past. Also, we have to include the partners of partners, direct and both indirect with Ripple and R3, and then not to mention all the ones who currently will be under NDA's non-disclosure agreements. And again, he says, so are you still doubting? We can see this was shared again by Fintech Singapore. It is the 2020 cross-border payments 100 FXC intelligence. So these are the top 100 cross-border payment companies according to FXC intelligence. So as we can see in this picture hopefully you guys can see this okay we see the vc backed growth stage in the top left we see banks in the top right we see private equity backed we see digital banks on the right as well under crypto and dlt we have ripple we have public companies non-banks and then we have independently owned and as you can see guys look via americas i recognize it alipay no surprise of course you know aci worldwide we know the connections is of course visa paypal western union um, RIA, you know, RIA, I know you guys have seen that before, MoneyGram, UBS, of course, Santander, just direct Ripple partners right here, HSBC, City, Bank of America, Barclays, Deutsche, DBS, JP Morgan. I mean, it should be no surprise, guys. And of course, JP Morgan's, you know, using Ethereum as well. But guys, cross-border payments, they need a bridge asset. Now, Ethereum might be great for decentralized applications or distributed apps to run on and have certain types of programs and smart contracts, you know, automation along with that and visibility on any vertical who knows we're just getting started i mean look right here royal bank of canada goldman sachs bny mellon amex american express it just never ends transfer wise transfer go i've literally talked about every single group the past probably year and a half um just wanted to share this so again thank you for that and then uh i guess i, I don't need to read this this was just sent to me by demore this is at westpac.com the future of transaction banking kind of on the way to 2030 just talking about cross-border payments and really just the evolution of transaction banking as a whole didn't really touch on too much cross-border payments i mean of course e-commerce we can see cross-border online shopping capital services showing the evolution um but interesting nonetheless he sends me some great information as well and as we can see here just look at the key titles i guess if you want to read it briefly invisible payments to dominate Again, it's going to be happening on, you know, underneath all of the layers, guys. Everyday people aren't even going to understand it. And it doesn't matter because I saw an example the other day. I don't know who said it. Some some YouTuber, maybe it was digital asset investor or somebody. But guys, talking about credit card payments, it was such a good point. Do you understand when you swipe the credit card with your magnetic strip? Do you understand how it functions? Because I don't. And I mean, obviously, I can Google it, but it's just funny how that's part of our everyday life. And most of us don't know that. Of course, you know, a lot of you know how cell phones work and computers and, you know, the overall Internet, the network of networks function. But there's still so many things and you can spend a lifetime trying to gather this data because it's truly infinite out there. It's always growing and, you know, exponentially growing on top of itself. So that's why, you know, you can only know so much. I know I'm kind of ranting about this, but. This is how I feel with cryptocurrency, with the whole Internet of value bridging into data, into the Internet of things, into voice with 5G increased throughput and cybersecurity concerns, quantum computing, you know, the implications of hacking quantum computers. Just so much is going on, guys, rather than, you know, the classical operating systems. But essentially, guys, I've been ranting. I just wanted to share that. Keep an eye on, you know, this whole talk of credit freeze. Let's see if there's talk about it on the news. Um, we're also going to continue to watch the repo operations, watching any type of rollout from Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin as well. And I appreciate it as always, guys. Be sure to like the video, share it around, comment down your thoughts down below as always, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks.